In the next edition of It's About Money, we'll be talking with Taylor Whitney. She's a business owner and an archivist, and we'll be talking about some interesting things to keep your past preserved. I'm Nanette Nokon. Stay tuned for It's About Money. Welcome to another edition of It's About Money. Thank you for joining us. I'm Nanette Nokon, and my guest today is Taylor Whitney. She is a business owner and an archivist and owns the business called Preserving the Past. Taylor, thank you for joining us today. Thank you. So what does Preserving the Past do? It's a wonderful uh, name for business. Oh, thank you. Yeah, it took some brainstorming to come up with it, but, <laughs> but it seems to capture really everything. Another tagline we have is the future of your history. And it's essentially archiving and preserving artifacts and memorabilia, photographs and film for future generations, for either businesses or families or institutions. I see. So it's not just about, when we think about the past, we t tend to think about our uh, ancestors, but it's really also with businesses. So Correct. to understand the founders and the people. Founders, and then it's passing on their ethics and their values to the future employees. And, and how they started the business and you know so we get boxes of artifacts which contain for businesses it might be land deeds and licenses and contracts and photographs of course uh, a lot of um, 16 millimeter film are found in business archives oh. and families but and these yeah. days they're not as much uh, as useful for uh, individuals to be able to play a 16 millimeter film. Correct, and it's at risk for deterioration. I swear. Because it, depending on its storage conditions, which should be cold and dry, and um, generally these kinds of boxes are kept in closets and attics and for businesses, warehouses or storage units. And it's really, it accelerates the deterioration process of the artifacts. Yes, yes. So sort of taking so, it out of the attic or storage room and putting some importance to what it really brings. Right, gaining information around the collection. Sometimes we'll get a collection that's got five generations in it. And mm -hmm. why is this family in this box with this other family? And making sense. And that's the first step of the archiving process. Is It's called intellectual order. Gaining and it really making sense of the collection. And whether that's for businesses or for families or a lot of time inst institutions will have, you know, an array of videotapes and photographs and, and film. Mm -hmm. And it's been collected for 40 or 100 years. And the new person, the new librarian or the new archivist at that institution or the business owner or the next generation in a family, they're like, well, what does this mean? And, you know, let's get the information. And it's a lot of research. It's fun. I see. That's cool. It's so you detective get, work. Yes, I, I was gonna, exa, exa, say exactly that. What motivated you to start the business? I worked in L.A. in the film industry and film preservation. My first, um, well, I worked in post-production, and then I went into um, a film library where I basically looked at films all day and got a paycheck. That was fun. Oh, nice. <laughs> <laughs> and cataloged the films and what was in it because it was for stock footage. Do you mm -hmm. know what stock footage is? It's the kind of thing that companies rent out or use. Well, it's like a shot. Say they shoot a movie and they're shooting the sunset over the ocean. Okay. And it's on 35 millimeter and it costs a lot of money to make that shot of the mm -hmm. sunset because a lot of times it's foggy. So you might have to sure. set it up a few days in a row and you get the perfect sunset. Another film comes along and they need a sunset at the ocean, so why not just oh. use those few seconds that they shot, or it might be B-roll, which is like the second unit shot, and, and they rent that or they li license it. Say, because when you have an establishing shot in a movie, it's only like two or three seconds. So they don't need to go set up a whole crew again, they license that. Well, we specialized in Hollywood history. So it was a lot of requests for, say, they were doing a commercial and they needed slapstick. They needed 30 seconds of slapstick. So we would put together a tape of 30 minutes or an hour of all the slapstick footage that we have. And then they would pick out shots that they wanted. And then they would um, license those particular shots I for see. a commercial, for a TV show. I see. Okay. So it, it really piqued in me an interest in history, which I didn't really know was inside there. Mm -hmm. 
And also we had a lot of film, it was mostly film. And those were the days where we went from film to tape, which we still do. Um, so slowly the collection was becoming not necessarily digitized, but that's what we would say today, mm -hmm. sure, sure. onto tape. But in the back, there was um, the film. And when you go back there, you could smell this odor. You started to begin, this was the early 90s, so you started to begin smelling this odor, which has now become known as vinegar syndrome. Mm -hmm. And it's, the, it's actually the acetate base decomposing, and it eludes this, it exudes this odor of vinegar. Mm -hmm. And that's become a huge problem. So then from that job I went to um, a cold storage facility specializing in film preservation and film inspection. Okay. Then I realized that all of this attention was being paid to Hollywood movies, but it wasn't being paid to family collections. Mm -hmm. So I started my business in film and photographic preservation, focusing on family collections. And that was in 1997. You're from the West Coast, from California. Right. What brought right. you to Rochester? Well, after several years of um, getting the business going, getting clients, gaining momentum, and getting educated in running a business and editing films and public speaking and Photoshop, which is really, really important, um, important for both film and for photographs, for restoration. Mm -hmm. um, there was a master's program that was offered through Ryerson University in Toronto and George Eastman House here in Rochester. Mm -hmm. It's a brand new program and it's unique in the world and it sort of brings museum studies together with library science, focusing on photographs. And it's called Photographic Preservation and Collections Management. And so I applied for the program and I was accepted and so I put everything on hold and packed up and moved to Toronto. <laughs> I see. Oh. And that, so it's one year up in Toronto, okay. which was theory and learning about the history of photographs and photographic processes. And then uh, the second year was in Rochester at George Eastman House, which is more of a practical applications. Which and many more people theory. Don't, and more people don't, <laughs> a lot of people don't realize that there's an educational component of the George Eastman House. As it yes, and there's the three schools. actually. There's one in film preservation, one in conservation, and then now this one in in preservation. Very nice, that's great. Right, so you know it was great. I, I would like walk up in the morning like I'm walking to a mansion to go to school every day. <laughs> it was just wonderful, it's beautiful. So I really liked Rochester and the um, even though it's a small city it's very culture. There's a lot of culture and um, universities and mm -hmm. you know it's not, um, it's not, it's kind of like a big city in a small city. There's theater, there's opera, there's, you know, mm -hmm. a lot of concerts and a lot of museums. Sure, you're yeah. right, you're right. So. There's a lot of amenities um, for a small city. You know? Yes, right. yeah. Now, when you recognize mm -hmm. that you'd like to, to do this type of work, doing uh, kind of a detective work and putting mm -hmm. together a historical framework for families, um, you also <laughs> expanded to other like businesses doing that kind of thing. Do you find that there's a lot of competition in the field, or is it something that most people don't think about, and you bring to light the importance of doing that? I think when, when we first started, um, I, I looked in doing my business plan. Mm -hmm. I l Fantastic. You're, su you're <laughs> supposed to compare rates, like how much do I charge for this service? And there was nobody, and the internet was still in its infancy, so it was hard to find it, research on the internet, but I could find nobody doing what I, what I started to do, mm -hmm. which was photograph preservation, get boxes out of closets, organize them, and design photo albums. That's how I started. I came from the film background and in each collection there was always home movies. Mm -hmm. And so I just brought the two together offering both services. Um, over the past only like five years, I've noticed when I go to conferences and, um, and then even over the last two or three years on the radio and TV, there's a lot of companies who sort of jumped on the bandwagon and said, you know, let's digitize all of these assets that are in our closets, in our attics, and in our garages. The difference in our company is that it, that we add the component of archiving, organizing the collection, getting the stories behind the photographs and behind the films, not just scanning and here's your DVD and right. okay, bye-bye. 
Sure. Not that they all do that, but I have not come across any other companies that offer all the services that we offer, which are the archiving and and um, putting the elements as high resolution on a hard drive, and if it's a film on a broadcast quality videotape, so that it's so that that's their analog master and their digital master, and the DVDs should only be considered as access. I see okay. copies. I see. So when you get your film transferred, it should go to a broadcast quality videotape, mm -hmm. and then to the computer, and then to an external hard drive, and and then a low resolution compressed copy to DVD. Okay. And DVD's longevity is not very long. <laughs> oh, is that right? So it's yeah. degree, degree it's over really about years. five or six years. Oh my goodness, that's right. Really a pretty it's short really time. Um, a, a huge concern because mm -hmm. people are getting their photographs scanned and put on DVD or their slides or mm -hmm. their films and they think that they have their archival quality, I mean their archive, archival copy or uh -huh. a copy anyway yes. right, right, right. on a DVD and then some, unfortunately some people throw out the originals. Oh, well, and sure. then they only have this DVD and then in five years or six years or ten years are there even going to be DVD players? So there's the the actual medium that breaks down, mm -hmm. but then there's obsolescence in the equipment. I see. So it's all uh, a false sense of security right. when somebody transfers it into DVD and then ends with that. Right. We, and and it started in the um, late 70s, 80s when they transferred home movie to VHS. And now we know that VHS is not only low quality, but it's also um, doesn't last very long. I see. Worse than the DVD. <laughs> Well, the quality is much worse than a DVD. Oh, sure. Okay. But the longevity of a VHS is about 10 or 12 years. Okay. But there's some people that have had them 20 years and they're still playing. Oh, I see. But that's mean. another another um, thing to consider is now we're getting into the generation of people that took home movies mm -hmm. on videotape. Mm -hmm. So home videos and those videos are at huge risk for deterioration. Sure. Because the film is going to last. If the film is in proper storage, it'll last 400 years. Oh, is that right? Or longer. Know okay. You know, if it's cold storage, it's a long time. I see. Videotape, okay. not so much. <laughs> Interesting. I didn't yeah. know that. Yeah, it's really a shame. Yeah. So, so what do you, go, help me go through the cycle, the process. So if I was, uh, I, I wanted to then... Um, record the history of my family mm -hmm. and we had shoe boxes and paper bags or whatever of <laughs> photographs and memorabilia what happens with that well, we'll bring it to you and say okay help me you bring it to <laughs> preserving the past <laughs> and um, generally we we have seven steps of archiving and the first step is one I mentioned intellectual order mm -hmm. we will go through the boxes it's it's generally chronological Sometimes it's a theme related, so maybe it's one person or it's a graduation, so it's a different culling process, but generally it's chronological. So we will go through the boxes approximately three times mm -hmm. on our own because it's less time consuming and therefore it costs less. Mm -hmm. Put it in chronological order by decade, mm -hmm. then the year in the decade, mm -hmm. then the month in the year, and then by the days. Mm -hmm. And how do we do that? That's where it's fun, where the CSI work comes in, because there might be a calendar on the wall behind somebody who's focused on the photo, and that tells us what year, or a car that's a 1921 sure. car, or 1940s. You know, so we can tell by the architecture and the landscape in the photograph mm -hmm. on what year it is. Sure. And and then we sit with the client, and that's that's an interesting process too, because. If the object of the job, of the project, is to put it in order and either design photo albums or get them pre digitized and prepared for cold storage, then, then that's the mission. But there's also the stories behind it. And there's also the walk down memory lane. Okay. And I think that's why a lot of clients um, don't do, potential clients don't do these kinds of projects because it takes so long and it's overwhelming. Mm -hmm. And that's where we take some of that out. You know, we go through that first culling process and then sit with the client mm -hmm. and then get some of the stories and put the photographs in even better order. I see. And um, those sessions ideally are videotaped. Mm -hmm. 
okay. so that we're sitting just like you and I are sitting mm -hmm. and the videotapes going and as they're looking at the photographs they're remembering this or that about the photographs and telling the stories at the same time we're databasing okay. so it's kind of, there's seven the seven steps that we've devised are also they they're intertwined so when you're going through them and the, putting them in the order the first stage you're the, the archivist is paying attention to what's going on in the photos, the people that look alike, this person in 1920 and the same person in 1970, and being able to kind of get an idea of what's going on. So that's part of the cataloging process going on while you're doing the intellectual order process. Okay. Then the scanning database mm -hmm. so that you put the image in, and then you can put the condition of the image, the historic process, which helps date the photo, Sure. the people that are in the photo, the reason they're in the photo, is it a family reunion, is it a business meeting, mm -hmm. is it somebody's birthday? Mm -hmm. Also, is, how is this person related to the current generation? I see. Right? Okay. Because if it's, you know, my great aunt and my great aunt's uncle was so and so, you know, it's just interesting to know. It sure. makes somebody, it, it adds importance and significance to this photograph to a grandchild who has no idea who's in this photograph, and now they know. Sure, great. You know, or the president of a company, or the founder. So it's quite a comprehensive so process there. It is, yeah. it is. Then, then it's rehousing. So you, you scan the photograph, you catalog, scan, database, and then house it so that it's in a safe environment. A lot of, any time, photographs are at risk for deterioration, <laughs> inherently. And they're also at risk for physical damage. Fingerprints, sure. not good. Sure. Yeah, <laughs> tears, yeah. They eat through, I've seen photographs where you can actually see the fingerprint etched in the photograph oh, goodness, because the just... oils over time like mm -hmm. etched into the emulsion. Sure. Uh -huh. um, and then a lot of times they're crumbling. So it's important to put them in a safe environment so that they're protected from handling fingerprints, more breakage and damage. I see. Then they're either placed, then they're put into the cold storage. I see. So there's, there's... And then they could access that whenever it's needed. Right. Okay. Very right. good. We're going to take a quick break. I'm Nanette <laughs> Nock, and I'm talking with Taylor Whitney, and she owns the business Preserving the Past. We'll be right back. Sounds like you could use some Van Gogurt. It's fortified with arts-rich nutrients to improve your math and reading skills. Catch! Van Gogher, thanks. So what's the deal with your ear? Always with the ear, huh? Feed your kids the arts. For 10 simple ways to learn how, visit americansforthearts.org. We're back. I'm Nanette Nalkan, and it's about money, and we're talking with Taylor Whitney, who is the owner of Preserving the Past. She's an archivist and a business owner, very smart business owner. <laughs> so we just talked about the process of um, getting raw information, so to speak, right. from families or businesses, and then you putting it together, housing it, and so it's available for access, and the importance of making sure that the, that the process is one that can last a long time as opposed to a DVD that may degrade in a few years. Right. Now, in, to start your business, you must have invested a lot of capital because you, you need to have a lot of equipment, don't you? Um, there is there's a, there's a significant amount of equipment. Mm -hmm. um, most of, for the past several years, the, the business has been a home-based business. Okay. And coming to Rochester, um, I, we were able to get an office space and lease lease an office space and it's it's divided up into an edit bay a photo prep area we call it and then the film inspection and prep area and then reception and administration so it's a small space but it's it's conducive to what we're doing um, any of the photo archiving is done in-house we have a high-end scanner and then the organizing and that really is just take space work tables and work mm -hmm. area okay. you know um, the editing we do in-house that mm -hmm. was expensive yes yeah, yeah. <laughs> nice nice mac pro uh -huh. two big monitors you know it's, it looks it's a it's, it's a nice setup 
Um, keeping up with the software is, you know, I was told a couple of years ago that we should really budget at least $10,000 a year for new software. Yeah, there's so you much know. out there. Oh, yeah. yeah. And that upgrades are not cheap. <laughs> You're right, right. Absolutely. Boy, they got so, us hooked, uh, those, uh, yeah. those different companies that put those products together. Right, right. <laughs> so so, um, so, so getting, to, getting to where we are now, mm -hmm. um, we did have an angel investor. We continue to have um, a little bit of help from actually a previous client who's become an investor. Oh, very so nice. that's that's a nice setup. That's great. And that's then great. gaining momentum and getting more clients and getting employees. No, are you, is your business mostly in the community? I mean, you go to LA, Toronto, is it all over the country? It really is. We have clients, I have a client in Texas and a few out in LA mm -hmm. still and they seem to keep coming nice. and a couple up in Toronto. Mm -hmm. And then there's there's been some here in, in Rochester, I tallied them up this morning. There's about 17, which is pretty good. Very nice. Um, we're in the yellow pages. I see. Okay. So is it, <laughs> and, is it uh, largely word of mouth? I mean, how do It's you a lot it? of word of mouth. I think this kind of work, I'm not sure. I think if, if it was just like, we'll digitize your photos, we'll transfer your home movies, and it's like bang, bang. Mm -hmm. That's maybe is okay for advertising, but generally... We do our marketing through um, doing workshops and presentations I see. and um, word of mouth. Mm -hmm. And I imagine it's not in the forefront of people's minds to put this together. It's maybe a family member is dying or getting elderly or you know what I mean? There's no sense of urgency, I can imagine. that. I think that I think it's this underlying urgency, frankly. Okay. I think it's, and especially now it's becoming more of a... a it's more a common knowledge, like we need to get these things at least identified. Mm -hmm. um, the previous, the previous like way back generations, like my grandparents, they didn't have photographs to archive, sure. right? That's important, yes. So, so now the next generation has them, but they went, they went into boxes, and then the next generation into boxes. And this generation seems to be more aware of the problem of them deteriorating and the information being lost with by death. Mm -hmm. um, so it is on the back burner. It's on people's minds. Mm -hmm. It's on the back burner, but it we want to get it on the front burner and get them get it done because it's so important. It's historical. Mm -hmm. It's it's um, historically and culturally significant. Sure. All of this imagery. Sure. And yeah. I imagine when you have more leisure time to do it, it's better to get it started than having a need to really dig up information for whatever purpose it Yeah, in three days be. because there's a memorial or something. Right, that's right. right. Yeah. Um, but I think, you know, the services that we offer are a way for people to get this done with, without having to do it themselves and sure. doing it in leisure time because you never know what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. I can imagine you know? there's some controversy that could pop up, some photographs that... Wish people oh, wasn't yeah. there. <laughs> Some juicy things We've that could happen. We've run into a few things like that, yes. <laughs> but generally, what yeah. would you say is the reaction yeah. of the companies and the families for whom you've done the work in preserving there? Um, they're overwhelmed. They're um, certainly pleased. Mm -hmm. They're generally crying, tearful, mm -hmm. joy, emotional, yeah. emotional. Um, I, when I was in LA, I, I had done this collection for a gentleman whose father was a sound engineer at MGM when it went from silence to talkies. Mm -hmm. And he invented a process called looping, which is teaching the actors, which is putting the sound on the film after the film's been shot. Because at the beginning, they didn't have mics that were too noisy when they first went with sound. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so we archived over 300 autographed photographs of movie stars from the, the MGM. So it was Lucille Ball, Jimmy Stewart, Clark Gable, Judy Garland. It was mm -hmm. a beautiful collection. Mm -hmm. So we went back, and then I had a friend come up to the house. This was, this was when I first started. He was my third client. Mm -hmm. And so I worked with him in 01. I'm still working with him, but that, that collection's done. So we started in 01, and, and he was telling my friend, as my friend was looking through the photo albums that are gorgeous, he was telling my friend about the project. And he and he's like, you know, an older gentleman, but he just started crying. I mean, it was so 
touching. It was just like he was getting so emotional talking about his father, talking about the work that we did, you know, together. Mm -hmm. And yeah, beautiful. Yeah, and I did a project here for a woman who um, we archived her Christmas letters oh. that her husband wrote, and mm -hmm. her husband is ill, so she was memorializing these Christmas letters that he wrote every year and we put photographs in with the letters mm -hmm. and you know it's just it's a very touching it's it's a wonderful feeling to present this to the families and sure and you know the book projects of the 50th anniversary of the company uh -huh. you know so you really can make yeah. it complete when I think of Christmas letters people talk about what's happened for the year but they usually don't have photographs with it so having all that together right can right piece the memories over the decades right and it chronicles their life because you're right it's like they have their life of a year in a, in a nutshell, sure, and then it comes into 26 years, right. you know, in one book. Right. So this is really an interesting way to, to sometimes people document in a biography or a family history. Mm -hmm. So instead of just text, you have photographs and you have written information. Right. And then sometimes, you know, we have the videotape. So you brought up another service that we offer, which is called Personal Histories. And, and it's videotaping somebody talking about their life and mm -hmm. leaving their legacy. And it could either be videotape or book form. Mm -hmm. And interviewing the person, and generally it's the patriarch or matriarch of a family or the business owner, and then putting together a book or a video project on their life. That's very touching as well. Oh, sure. That's you really good. Get a lot of uh, World War II vets, uh -huh. you know, talking about that experience. And I see. Oh, interesting. It was a wonderful yeah. gift for someone to give uh, someone with that history to just kind of record right. the past. And right. And a lot of times it's the 40, 50 something generation that's doing it, that's um, financing the project for the I see. For their fathers or mothers. Right, right, because they have all the history Although, and they don't want to lose it. It's a good right. way to kind of hold it on is, to It is. It's a that. nice gift. Sure. It's a really could, good gift. You could lose that, that uh, verbal history, you know, if, if you don't record it, if it's right. all done and by words. Yeah, and so many times I meet people that if I only had, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. I, yes. I always thought about it, but I never did it, Yeah, you know. So as you look back, when you started the business mm -hmm. and where you are today, are you happy that you made the decision to put the business together and, uh, you know, what, what's your, would you I get, suggest yeah, this I would say I'm thrilled. Okay, that's you great. Know, I love going to work every day. I uh -huh. love, you know, I go to sleep at night thinking of new ideas that that we can do for a particular project. And, and it's technical and creative, you know, so it's, you know, it's, it's rewarding to learn new things technically. Mm -hmm. um, frustrating at times. Yeah, <laughs> right, right, right. And then it's also artistic and creative. Sure. We get to be creative with video and with effects and with sound and audio, and then we get to be creative with designing, mm -hmm. designing things. And yeah, and we'll show some and, of that. Uh, so, yeah. So you bring a lot of joy to people's lives by helping them. Yeah, and together. then it's very rewarding. Mm -hmm. I guess it's really um, probably the most rewarding work I've done. And that's great. Yeah. That's great. So you would suggest someone who has the skills. I mean, it, it takes a lot, obviously, to have right. learned what you've learned based on your uh, work history, your education, and your interest. It all kind of compiled together to be able to offer this kind of service that's comprehensive. Yes, and I think it's important to bring that education and and experience to the table because a lot of people aren't don't take the archiving process as seriously as it needs to be taken to to keep these artifacts safe for hundreds of years sure. which is the goal sure right you know yeah so if well. you're not doing it the right way then the the history is still at risk i see for annihilation well thank you yeah. i can't believe that we've run out of time we have so many wonderful <laughs> things to talk about and i do appreciate all what you've shared with us and uh We'll be looking at some of the um, work that you've done. And thank you for, for being here. I thank really you appreciate for asking it. me, really. <laughs> and, and thank you, our guests, for joining us. My guest today is Taylor Whitney, owner and business owner and archivist, owning the company, preserving the past. My name is Nanette Nokan. It's about money. We'll, we'll see you soon. Thank you. Thanks for tuning in to today's show. If you have any questions for It's About Money, please email Nanette at nnocon at aol.com.
This program was produced through Penfield Community Television in Penfield, New York.